We will start with a presentation of two platforms. The first one is uh, the Ellison platform, 14 uh, million users, 1,200 free of charge courses. And it is said that so the Ellison platform is a flexible structure and quite a prompt solution compared to, to some alternative conventional education. And this is something that corresponds to the needs of a new year and is related specifically to the global, global education throughout your life. Thank you, Alex, and uh, delighted to be here, and thank you for the invite. Uh, so I thought I, I'd take uh, just 10 minutes just to want to respond to the premise of this meeting, and you, if you've seen the introduction, you'll have seen a number of questions there. So I'm going to give a small, uh, just quick answers as I see them, perhaps to create the foundation for good argument later on, and then I will uh, just do a quick uh, presentation on Alison. So hopefully I won't take too long. But I, I have to say that when I was given the invite, I was delighted with the, the title of the session, which was to look at human capital development rather than necessarily education platforms, because education and training is usually a subset of human capital development, whereas the conversation, many, certainly in the United States and, and globally, is really about education platforms. But actually, high, higher, you know, human capital development is the higher level. That's where we should be talking. So I thought the question was well posed. Uh, in terms of when I started Allison in 2005, my intention was to create a human capital development platform, not a free learning platform. That's why I called it Allison.com, something that could morph like Alibaba or Google into something else rather than freelearning.org. So anyway, that's just the, the basis of that. Uh, there, there's a couple of uh, comments about trends. One was about structure of demand, and I think rightly made, certainly in developing economies, developed economies. The systems we have today are too old. They're too costly, they're too narrow, they teach too little, and they don't go deep enough. And we know that the systems that are digitally based are certainly way faster. Their current knowledge, or they can be, they can be free, which certainly drives the, the access. They can be un unlimited in how broad they are in terms of how many subjects they can speak, because any university you can name only has so many subjects. And then, what, uh, to, to go back to what Alex was saying about the depth, having, you can have real depth in these platforms. But the one thing I would like to remind you of is that only 7% of the world have ever gone to college. So here in, in, in Moscow and in other parts of the Western world, we are very privileged with the education we have. But in fact, from a corporate, from a business point of view, we're excluding nearly 93% of the world's workforce from being able to participate. And it's not just that we can employ these people, but actually if they were educated, they would be actually wealthier, more prosperous, and they could buy the products and services that we produce. So it's important that when we look for training that we have to create uh, systems that actually invite the rest of the world to participate. The, the comment is made in the preamble about state funding perhaps becoming secondary to market-based. I think that's true, and I, hopefully my, my Alison story will, will prove that. But that actually releases up to 1% to 2% of every government's uh, budget worldwide to spend on higher level specialization because platforms like Allison are going to be doing the bottom line stuff. And then talking about tra traditional education trying to innovate. Yes, they're trying to innovate, but very few presidents want to stop making half a million dollars a year or whatever they're making and they're very reluctant to change the business models. Most of what of universities ch uh, teach around the world is stuff that can be done more freely and cost uh, costless online. So they really need to start charging differently. I often challenge university presidents in the Western world and ask them, you know, what business are you in? And they say, of course, straight away education. And then I tell them, look at the balance sheets of your universities. Most of them are going more and more into accommodation, trying to attract people to come to a location for an experience. It's developmental, it's social, but it isn't learning. That's where the edge is. So uh, more and more you're seeing the consolidation online of, of, of free, uh, free online learning is, is taking a driving seat. So there's a couple of qu first quick questions. One was, are platforms going to change the industry? And uh, absolutely. And what you're going to find out in... in I, I could challenge the room here for anybody to think, you know, what is the, who is the leader in education worldwide? And you'd struggle, all of you, to put up your hand and say who that is because it's extremely fragmented. You might end up at saying YouTube and you might be right. But at the end of the day, it's hugely fragmented. What you're going to see as the education industry is digitized is that you're going to see the, 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 the development of a small number of global leaders. And, it's, and, and Russia needs to just consider, do you be part of that or do you try to create something similar, uh, separate? 
the, um, you know, is, is education techniques going to be effective? Well, certainly the fact that you can repeat stuff and, uh, you know, the, the whole mastery, if you don't get the test right the first time, you can do it again and again because it's self-paced. You're not taking the time of a teacher. People want to learn in bite-sized learning today. That's what digital, digital provides. And psychometrics is really, really important in this whole equation because it's kind of an outlier, but uh, think about it this way. I was reading an article the other day that the top 15 employers in America no longer are considering formal education as part of their hiring process. What they're doing is actually giving you a series of psychometric tests, find, trying to find out who are you, what's your personality, what are your innate skills, are you a team player, are you motivated? These are the things that employers want to know. And, uh, and that's the opportunity that di these digital platforms are, are enabling, like Alison, and talk about that. Student attitudes to learning. To me, I, I have two, two kids in college, and uh, you know, the one thing I see students think is the freedom that they have. If courses are free, they can start studying, study what they want, and then stop. They're not insisting. If they go to a course that they don't like, their parents will tell them, well, finish it, we started investing it in already. But actually, that's an inefficient use of the kid's time. Today, you, can, you should be able to learn when you want and be able to stop learning when you want so that you choose better your time. And this is important in a world where children are becoming more rare. We need to use our time more, more, more carefully. Is education, how do we retain it as a topic? I think that the simple thing there is that it's going to become far more competitive. Think of platforms like Alison or Coursera or edX or any of these. We're allowing the world to study. So the average capability of everyone on the planet is rising. So you need to keep ahead of that. So if you want to earn a premium, you want to earn a good wage, you need to know more than the next guy. And suddenly the world knows nearly everything you know. So you need to think about the implications of that. Certainly in terms of personal tracks, there's no question with education in the future, it's going to start with the employer. Most people go to education to figure out how they can make money uh, for a lifetime. But that's becoming more competitive all the time. Employers will state exactly what they want in terms of psychometrics and education profile. And then, you know, is education more effective for teachers? Well, I think there's going to be far fewer teachers as we know them today in existence in a few years' time. The, the ones that will make money and who will continue will be those that are specialists and those that uh, they are perhaps moving from teaching to coaching. So if I can just go to, to Alison, I just have about seven slides just to give you uh, an idea of who we are, just to back up a, a little bit. So, um, and is this going? Okay, so this is the point I was making, is that the teaching of the world has been done by very few people today. We've been relying on professors and, 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 and lecturers. But the truth is that everyone in this room taught somebody something today. You're all teachers. It's just that we haven't really enabled, enabled in, a, in a technological way your teaching ability. So there's enormous power of the crowd that's coming. And it's inevitable, and you better get used to it, is that people are teaching everyone else what to do about anything. So we've got to look at institutions a lot less. On the Allison platform, and if you just focus there on the left-hand side, we provide four things. Free learning. We allow you to publish for free. We allow you to do psychometrics. Who are you? Again, you know, who are you? What are your skills? And allow countries to test against other countries. And then we direct you direct, correct, uh, directly into recruitment and, uh, so that you can see the scale of a human capital platform. Some stats about us, uh, as Alex said, we have 14 million people worldwide. We have 2 million graduates. Our biggest country worldwide is the US. We have 100,000 learners in Russia, and which surprised a few people today that I talked to. What are they learning? Mostly English language, basic business skills. And 50% of people access our content via mobile. And the biggest thing I want to tell you about is what's coming, is we launched self-publishing only in the last three months. And in 12 years of operation, we've had 120 publishers, but we already have in sight 1,000. So there's an enormous amount of content already coming on a platform. And it's not just Alison. These are coming from a lot of different platforms. We have 1,200 courses or 1,300 courses. We're going to have, I know the names and the titles of 5,000 courses that are coming on Alison in the next couple of months. And for every publisher, we provide them the statistics. Who studied, um, who, 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 who got jobs, and all that sort of stuff from it. The, th the point that might be interesting to a Ru Russian audience is, and, and this is my last slide here, is to how easy it is to translate all of the content on the Allison platform into Russian language. And it takes very, very little investment because the technology allows you to do it fairly automatically to begin with, and then you go in and you manually change what's ro not right. So um, to, to, to take advantage of technology and to allow massive education, on-demand on education, you have to automate learning. You have to use the power of the crowd, 
It has to be free, because it can be free. And if you're trying to make money from a non-free system, you're going to struggle. It needs to be transparent so you build trust, very important. And your solutions need to be global. So again, when I encourage people that are strategic looking, how does Russia look at this? I think that you have to look at elements of the strategy that need to be global. You have tremendous expertise in Russia. You should share it, enormous source of goodwill. But also the other platforms are going to be universal. So to finish, our vision is really to empower everyone, not just the elite. And it's possible today. We should have six, seven billion people on our platform. And, uh, you know, who's to say we can't do it? But if we don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. So, there's just some opening remarks. Thanks.